Hello everybody and welcome back to Hearts of Iron where we are currently finishing off the last little remnants of the United States here and really this should be uh, pulled on down. Let's go ahead and select units assigned to this order. Okay, so that's this army group and we need this front line to be moved on down here like so. We are expecting to see a little bit of loss over here while we're working on moving troops in, but we're nearly done there and we're working in over this way. Are these guys retreating? Yeah, they both are. Okay, that looks fantastic. We're gonna have that dealt with and we're going to make our way over here nice and quickly. Fantastic. So we're still working on Canada and Alaska over here, but the U.S. has overall capitulated, and that is fantastic. The leader of the American Union is now Japan. Now, they only recently joined the American Union, so we're not really in position out here. You can see that they are heading in over this way to make a landfall, and... It's not great, but we'll see what we can do about that. We're working on getting some troops over this way. They're probably going to make some gains over here in the next little while. But the war goes on. Without the United States, though, I really feel like they're going to have a very, very hard time doing this. Now, we have set up our navies over here. They've not arrived yet. But we have our navies set up, and we should be able to get some pretty decent coverage out over here. So that is fantastic, and once they do arrive, then we'll be happy there. Now we've got some more things going on in the Caribbean. For now, we're just going to tick on forward and get a few things done over here in North America. Get that just cleaned up. And then we'll turn our eyes over to Japan. I don't expect that Japan will be too difficult, however... I do want to move some of these over here. There we go. And we want to get at least some air war going on over Japan immediately. So we're going to do that. And I mean, realistically, we could move a lot of planes from over here. And I feel like we should. Let's see. These are jet fighters. And if we have those based, say, over here, that should be fine. So we'll hop them over, and yeah, you can see some nuking going on over here. But honestly, I don't care about this nuking. That's completely irrelevant to me. Yes, Japan is pushing out over here. That is to be expected. Yes, there's a dangerous naval invasion going on over here. That is again to be expected. Japan is going to throw their weight around over this way until our naval gets or until our navy gets into position over here. But I do want to check in our decisions here. Do we have any ability at this point? Hmm, maybe not. Maybe we don't. Apparently we don't. Okay, I was just checking to see if we had any prospecting for resources available. But no, that is not a thing at this time. And we're still making our way in over here. We expect all of this to get stack wiped quite quickly. And then we'll just get set up on this line up here. Should be fine. In theory, anyway. We do want to make sure that we have all of our infrastructure queued up over here that we can. And once that finishes up, that will be great. I was definitely not anticipating Japan entering this war, but it is what it is. I guess it's fine for now. And yeah, you can see here, our troops are making their way all the way up. We should probably think about a war support, and actually I don't have my folder where I have my note in open. Uh, 1 November 1985 is when we could do our war support. So let's go ahead and do it right now. So war support of 12, and then we pay our political power of 75. There we go, and that means that it's going to be March, April. So April, May, June, June 8th of 1986 is when that will come off of cooldown. So 8, June, 1986. There we go. Noted down. Hello, pause menu. Noted down. Fantastic. We're going to continue to push in over this way. We do see Canadian troops filing down here, but as we are starting to get up to this border, we shouldn't see any additional problems over here. There. Yes, this is going to be a thing for a little bit. It's going to be a while before our troops actually make their way over to this coast and get over the ocean. But that's okay. 
Yeah, we're seeing some Japanese Navy out here, that's for sure. Where are our naval units at? Oh, there's an air. That would help if we were in Navy. <laughs> Fantastic. So our naval units are heading in. Now, Japan has probably been building up this entire time. Yes, this is unsurprising to me. We are on our way over, though. And these guys can head in over here. I was, I was not expecting Japan to join the American Union. Like, who would at this situation? We will be able to handle Japan, but we'll take some small losses over here while we're working on that. You can see that we're working on getting some of this done over here, and we have troops on their way. So that is completely fine. We should probably have... Let's see, these guys are set up to defend like that. We're going to have these guys come over and do something along the lines of this. And then these guys, they're going to respond to this particular naval invasion. It will take time for them to get there, and we'll see losses. But we are pushing into Canada. And we have cut off the push down over here on the, like, Washington side. So that's absolutely great. No problems whatsoever there. We're going to continue to see losses over here as we respond to this. It will take us time to get here. That said. Just thinking here. This is technically within the uh, Russian Far East. All of these landings are. For now. That'll change. But what if we were to move, say, these guys over to this airbase and have them be here? Do we have any strategic bombers in range at this time? And I want to check our air superior. Oh, wow. Does Japan not have airplanes? They have 16 military factories used in airplane production. They do have airplanes. 20 to 30k. We don't really know how many of each. Speaking of which, we may want to start actually doing some cryptology here. I mean, this is the United States, which is not tremendously useful. So, yeah, we'll wait on that for now. And, I mean, it looks like they're just not employing their airplanes right now. So, over here. What I want to do is start doing nukes. And we need the air superiority in the region. We, I think, don't have our planes here just yet. They're arriving now. And now we've got our air superiority. Okay. So, not over here. But we can grab these guys and move them into Manchuria. Like so. They'll arrive eventually. And we're going to begin nuking. We want to prevent these guys from grabbing as much territory as possible on the way over. If we can, we would love to stack wipe them whenever they land over here. I don't know how realistic that is. And you can see that we do have troops already on the way over. So that's fine. Have these nukes gone off? Yes, they have. Okay, so we're going to keep doing that. And once again, we know that they're going to have supply issues the same way that the United States did. The exact same way, in fact. That is a guarantee. Kaboom. And we're going to continue this. Yes, they're getting some gains over here. The question is, at what cost? At what cost? Uh, the explosions have gone off, so let's go ahead and continue the nukage. You can definitely see here, they are taking some pretty hefty hits. That's great. We're very pleased about this. We're going to continue the nukages as we continue to respond to this. These guys are arriving over here. And our troops are on the way. There's a lot of them on the way. So that'll be fine. How are we doing navally? Moderate. Is how I'm going to term it. We're doing moderately well. Okay, that's fine. I mean, let's check it at let's check in on our uh, steel gains here. Uh we are Oh, we have lots of steel. 
We have tons of steel now that the U.S. has capitulated. So, to that end, we are going to get some more shipyards going here. We're going to do... I really wish you could just duplicate some of these lines, but we're going to do the 1944 Cruiser Hull Mark II, and we're going to do five of those. So, let's see. Cruiser Hulls. Two. And three. Four and five. This will be the fifth one. And we're, of course, going to have five shipyards in each of those. Okay. Next, we're going to do destroyers. And those will be the 1944 Destroyer Hull Mark IV. That's one. And let's see. Two. There we go. Three. Uh, destroyer hulls. Four. And... Finally, five. And then we're going to do the same thing with submarines. So that will be actually probably easier if we did this. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's way easier. Okay, so we'll crank these up to maximum number of dockyards working on them. And you can see we are negative in our steel now. That's unsurprising. But that is completely fine. So there we go. We're going to work on those navies as much as possible. Okay, we still have free dockyards. But we're on our way over, and we should put a stop to this fairly soon. Okay, as far as Canada goes, that appears to be fairly under control over here. Although, we're still making our way in pretty dramatically. We still have a lot of movement to do over here. Let's take a look at infrastructure, see if we can get any additional infrastructure built. It looks like we've actually constructed the infrastructure in basically all of these locations now. No. This is, this is anti-air. I am dumb. This is the infrastructure. We have not constructed all of the infrastructure. This is more like what I was expecting to see. Perfect. Large ships on low strength. Sure. So you can definitely see over here, we are starting to arrive. They do have some toeholds, but they won't last forever. We are on our way. This is a spicy route to take. <laughs> I like it. It's very spicy. So yeah, lots of troops making their way. Holy Canadian troops, Batman. Are these all Canadian? What are you doing, Canada? They have 292 divisions now. Okay. These are probably super weak divisions. Fascinating. They're like all right over here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to just continue that Holy Canadian Troops Batman line. That's, that's what's happening here. Insane. All of their troops are right here. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot of them, to be sure. We're still moving our troops into position, but if they recruited all of these incredibly quickly, then I'm expecting these to be very poor in terms of their troop performance. So I don't think that's too much to worry about, and if it is, then we'll just nuke them into oblivion, and that should be no problem. As far as Canada's manpower going... I mean, they're at 41k, and they've always been at kind of low manpower. I'm wondering where they got all these troops. Maybe some of them are Japanese, and they're only showing up as Canadian? Maybe. But if Japan is sending all of their troops here, then they're going to struggle over here, for sure. Okay. Well, we'll make our way over there eventually, and once we arrive, it should be fine. I do expect these troops to be not very good. These Canadian troops. But there's a lot of them, for sure. Canada is super close to capitulation. Like, literally all we need here is Vancouver. That is it for Canada capi to capitulate. So we may want to actually... Oh, we've got the air superiority. Is what we don't have the uh, range? Yes, that is the problem. Okay, so air mode, and let's find our strategic bombers, which I think we're, like, all the way down here. 
Where did we have those? All the way down here. Yeah. So you can see that's the strategic range of the bombers. We're going to move them up to be, like, based in Utah. No problem. Once they arrive here, we'll be able to begin nuking that huge group of troops. Here they come. They're here. Okay. We can see Canada has over 90 units in this province. We're going to nuke it. 40 in this one. Just huge concentrations of them. And we're going to continue hitting those as frequently as possible. I am 100% convinced that they cannot replace these losses. Oh, it helps if I unpause. <laughs> I was just waiting for the nukes to go off. But yeah, uh, it turns out unpausing helps. Like, this is... There they go. Canada capitulated after those nukes. So, at this point... We've got these guys over here. So, this army... Actually, we're going to just go ahead and delete this. This army is going to frontline here. There are a few U.S. troops holding out over this way. So these guys are going to be... Oh, I had this selected wrong. These guys are going to be the ones frontlining here. And then they're going to offensive line. Straight in like... Sure, that, that'll do. <laughs> it's really ugly, but it'll do. The rest of our troops... Oh, we do see there's some Japanese forces over here. The rest of our troops are going to rush up this way and front line in Alaska. And we're going to offensive line over here. It looks like the Japanese might be thinking about landing over here. And they did, in fact. That's fine. We're going to have these guys offensive line. And that offensive line is going to be bloop like that. Okay. So there's Canada gone. Fantastic. Now, as far as Japan goes, I mean, we do see a number of troops here, and it is Hiroshima, so I guess we'll be historically accurate and drop a nuke on them in 1986. I mean, <laughs> I'm not claiming that that happened. There was a nuke on Hiroshima. It's not in 1986. We're also dropping one on Tokyo for good measure. What could possibly go wrong? Kaboom. Cool. So we're moving troops in over this way, and there's a lot of them. That's for sure. We'll hold a patriotic speech. <laughs> there's the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. <laughs> Fantastic. How many more will fall before this war ends? I'm glad that they have a news report for that. We're, you know, 40 years late, but... Whatever. Whatever. We're going to hold a patriotic speech. As far as this over here goes, we're just going to nuke all of these guys, and we don't expect them to be able to replace any of these losses. I want this under control. Oh, and we should also make sure that we're building infrastructure up over this way. That would tend to help. Okay. Potentially a dangerous naval invasion over here. Yeah, I'm not too surprised about this. Japan is going to kind of do this. It's just a thing that they're going to do. That's fine. I would absolutely love to get more resources, but honestly, there's kind of not really more resources to get. So there's that. That is completely okay. And honestly, the Japanese landfalls over here have not been tremendously successful. We do have units still heading over. Most of them are still in the Pacific. And that's fine. So these guys are pushing into Seattle. We'll have no problem with that. That is completely fine. And we are definitely expecting a naval invasion in Korea. That is very unsurprising. That is certainly the kind of thing we'd expect Japan to do right now. However, we have plenty of troops on the way over, and that is great. I do want to check all of these navies over here. Oh, a lot of these are not replenishing. 
Okay. So we should definitely make sure that things like this, they definitely need to be at 20. Not 29, but 20. And they need to have, in addition to the heavy cruisers, they need submarines and destroyers. And we don't really care about the battleships. We're not actually producing additional battleships. We'll do something like that. Let's go through the rest of these. Once again, we need destroyers. We need submarines. And we're going to do 20 of each. Like so. There we go. Same thing here. We need, we have heavy cruisers here, so destroyers and submarines. And we'll just have 20 of each. I'm actually surprised that some of these forgot what they were supposed to have. I know I went through this previously, but okay. So heavy cruisers and submarines. How many do we have in our stockpile fleet, I wonder? That's something we should check once we're done going through these. But we definitely want to bulk these fleets up. No doubt about that. We need destroyers in this one. There we go. This next one appears to be fine. This one definitely wants to have heavy cruisers as well as destroyers. We'll have 20 of each. There we go. This is just submarines as well. So we'll put in the cruisers and we'll put in the destroyers. All is fine. This one's okay. Fine, fine, and this one is not fine. So we'll put in the destroyers and the submarines. 20 and 20 and 20. Perfect. Okay, so what do we actually have in this? We have 120 subs in this fleet. Okay, well, those are going to get reinforced elsewhere. <laughs> and that's good. That is very, very good. As far as the Seattle region goes, it looks like that is currently falling. Yes. Yes, indeed it is. That's great. Canada still has this island out over here. We're going to need to naval invade that, and that's going to be slightly spicy, perhaps. What with Japan entering the war. But look at all these units that we have landing over here. They are arriving. And that is fantastic. We're very, very glad about that. We do have these divisions that could be moved into, say, this force, and that's okay. We'll go ahead and do that. Seattle has fallen, and we're just going to continue to push in over this way. No problem. As far as Alaska goes, they've not actually made any gains out over here, surprisingly. With Seattle falling, that does mean, of course, that we can work on our infrastructure over here, and I guess I missed this location. Sure. That'll be fine. And yeah, I mean, our infrastructure is going to be finished up fairly soon here. As our compliance improves, we should be seeing additional steel as well. So this number will get better and better. So that's great. Basically, all we need to do at this point is finish off the Caribbean and Japan. Now you can see here, Korea has basically fallen. And we're going to tell these guys that they're going to come frontline over here. Okay. So there they go. And we do have a number of these that are redirecting over here rather than landing in Korea, since, of course, that has moved a bit. But our troops are arriving. And that's great. Slightly surprising that Japan is letting us do this, but great, nonetheless. So you can see in the naval map mode, things are spicy, to be sure. Absolutely spicy. Japan has a lot of a lot of ships, but we outproduce them, and we will eventually win. Emphasis on the eventually. That's the uh, that's the thing here. I mean, there's a lot of these that are not being produced due to lack of steel. That's okay. We don't mind. We have a lot of ships that are being worked on at any given time, and we will take control of the seas eventually. The question is, how long will that take? Now, I'm going to tell these guys that they want to offensive line down to here, and they can go ahead and start working on that. 
As far as these guys over here go, I mean, these are intended to go down to Korea. And of course, their goal is going to be to offensive line something along the lines of that. These guys, their goal is going to be to offensive line that. And then these guys, where are they going? I'm actually unsure where these guys are going. We'll find out. Are they assigned here? Maybe. Regardless, we're going to move on in here. And I don't think we're going to have a tremendous amount of trouble pushing Japan back off of mainland Asia. I think that'll be nice and easy. We should also think about a navy solution up here. We're going to need that. I mean, we could have these guys move. We still want to have this go off. So there is that. These divisions are unassigned. We're going to assign them over here. That'll be fine. And we're going to continue to push into Alaska, which Japan is attempting to garrison. Sure. <laughs> How much manpower does Japan have right now? About a million. So they have less manpower than we do, as well as less manufacturing capacity. This is never going to work. It is never, ever going to work. These guys have forgotten where they're supposed to be frontlining, unfortunately. So there's that. But yeah, Japan is never going to win this. It's just a matter of time. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we will start our war against Japan in earnest. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.